Uh, welcome to DC Train Automation. So we're now going to look at track detection and two products that your Mork do. A Locanet version, which we have here, and these other ones are S88. So um, Locanet will work with Digitracks, DigiKeys, your Mork, Ulumbrock, any Locanet system, the Locanet one will work with. As we've got here, we have a Locanet with two S88 ones connected. The Locanet one is the only one with the USB interface, which is what we need to configure the units. Once the USB is connected to the Locanet one, you can configure the other units over the ES link that's available. So when we look at the screen, this is the Locanet unit. Because we've got the USB in, we can click on there. We can update the, the, the Locanet one to the latest firmware. If we want to look at the two S88 ones, we click on the ES link, and now we can see those two units independently. So you've got one, two, the same as here. We can go to either one of these two um, and configure them independently. So if I go to the first one, now we can see only this first S88 module. We can again update the firmware of that unit, or we can go to the outputs and address these outputs okay so in here you can you can um, tell it what addresses you want here you can see them all here all the outputs so if this were connected up to the track and you put the loco on it you'd see this show the um, occupancy of the loco in whichever output it was connected to if I go back to the loco net one there we go go back to here so to set the addresses, we can start in here. Um, again, you can address any output individually now. You don't have to just follow one after the other after the other. Any output can be individually addressed. Um, you can set a delay um, to the state of which the occupancy message comes on. So if you want it instantly, um, basically this 10 as it is, um, as the default is fine. But if you wanted to up it, so... 15, 20 milliseconds later, you wanted to see the occupancy of the loco as it entered the block. You could adjust it here and the delay as it leaves the block. So it doesn't instantly stop sending the message that the loco was there. It does delay it for a, a specific set of time. OK, so you can you can adjust these addresses to whatever you want. So we could put this to 22, go auto and then the first eight are set. We click on, close that, click on this one, no, not that, James, this one, and you see the second part hasn't been addressed yet. So that was to 29, so we get 30, hit auto, and it consecutively addresses them. But you can set them to whatever you like, like I say. So that's that. If we then go to the S88 in, we have to tell it how many modules the loco net one is looking after. So here we have two. So in here we say there's two modules, 32 contacts in total. We click on that. And then whatever you've addressed this, this will from that point on address the other two modules. If you're using the Locanet module to manage two or three or four S88 ones, Whatever you set the addresses of the Locanet one, and then you've told it how many module there after, it just carries on the addressing from where you left the Locanet version. So you can't independently address the S88 outputs. They're just a follow on from where you were. So here, look, you can see that they're starting at 17 and carrying on all the way up to 48 because of the first one was below 17. So you, you can see it there. And then this is those S88 modules. Also, you can look at, if you click on the Locanet port on, on the configurator, you see here it says in, in internal S88 contacts. So these are the contacts the S88 are using whilst connected to the Locanet module. If you had a, a command station that was only S88, so you take out the Locanet one out of the, the um, configuration of um, setup, 
you can't address these modules independently. So the first one that's plugged into SC88 is 1 to uh, 16, and the next one would be 17 to 32, and the next one, and so on and so forth. So if they're only used on SA88 operation, you can't set that independently. Okay. Something else that is built into these new LocoNet modules is rather than the outputs be for current sensing track detection, you could also use them to put this in a mimic panel with push button switches, um, and then it becomes the input, then becomes an accessory address. So if we click on the screen here, at the moment you'll see they're all set to feedback. So if I change this to turnout, this address now becomes the accessory address of the point motor. So you might have an accessory address of 100 and all your point motors are 100 and move on from that position. So every output could be a push button to switch and a point motor from a mimic panel. Or if you wanted an S lever from DCC Concepts that could connect in, that would use two outputs for every turnout. So on here, you would put these to the same address. Um, and then you would have one thrown right and one thrown left. That would give the ability for these two contacts to be throwing them those two different ways. And if the lever was not matching the thrown or the straight position of the point motor as you wished, you would just invert those two images here so they were the other way around. And then that would be a really quick way to create an analog switch into a digital signal and that would go back over LocoNet to the command station and set the point. So if you had iTrain or train control also connected up, they would also know that when you've moved that switch or push button or whatever it is you've used, that it had switched the point. It wasn't just a virtual switching, it was actually switched it. Um, that's really quite a useful function. Something else to think about if you wanna have a mimic panel. Um, because all you would have in the Mimic, coming out of the back of the Mimic panel, would be a LocoNet cable. Um, you could do it, they're bringing it, this is the current sensing version, there's going to be a grounded version, so it'd be totally volt free, and literally you would just put the switch from the common to the output, so if it was a push button switch, the two um, the terminals, one would be from the C, one would be to the output, and when you pressed it, it would just make a circuit, and then switch that command and send it over LocoNet, so it'd be very little wires to your um, to your layout and the, the control panel. Yeah.